Hey guys, what's up? It looks like you all really liked my Leica killer build video. If you haven't already seen it, I'll link it up here and down in the description, so go check it out. Um, but today what I wanted to do was follow up on that video and show you some of the images that I've been getting out of this combo, um, out of my two recent outings with the family. And um, just kind of show you guys what kind of results I've been getting from this and show you how capable of a rig this really is. I am very impressed with it. I think you will be too. So let's go check it out. All right, so like I said, uh, the kids were on spring break. So we decided to take them to Universal Studios Hollywood. So this one, I am super happy with the way these came out. I shot these at F8 because I really wanted to try to get more of that background, more of that background into the photo. So we can zoom in a bunch here. I don't even know what I'm at now, but it's extremely zoomed in. And you can just see all the details on this statue here. And we still have enough of the castle in focus, which makes for a really, really interesting photo. And the dynamic range on the A7C is incredible and the, and the shadow recovery is super good as well. So um, as you can see, I shot this at ISO 100, F8, and shutter speed of 1320. And uh, this is not a sky replacement at all. This is exactly not out of camera. I did edit this, but I did not replace the sky. This is the sky on that day, which I think is super cool. And look at all of the contrasts we're getting here. Again, this was edited. Actually, I could probably show you the non-edited version here. So there we go, non-edited versus edited. You can see I brought out some of the oranges and a little bit of the teal that was in the statue. But look at how much I was able to recover from the highlights and from the shadows. You can tell, look at the, um, the statue, the shadows right around its chest and under its wings. I was really able to bring out the detail there. And the sky, I was able to bring all of that down and get some of those details from the clouds back. So this is, I'm really happy with this image. I think it came out super cool. And it's not really a perspective that you see a lot when you, you know, I guess one of my philosophies with going to places like this, like Universal, has thousands and thousands of visitors per day all of them with some sort of camera either in their pocket or around their neck and so to take pictures at places like this and have them stand out you really have to look for those angles that a lot of people aren't looking at you know i see a lot of people just taking head height pictures with their smartphone just looking straight ahead wherever they're going but to get this picture, you know, the, if you've ever, ever been there, these statues are pretty high. So you really have to walk around. You have to be looking up, looking down, looking all around, looking for those angles that not a lot of people get. So let's go through a few more of these Hogwarts castle images here. Um, here's another one, another cool angle. This is like towards the exit of the ride. And there was this really cool rock formation right here. And... I mean, the, the amount of detail that this lens captures is just incredible. And um, as you can see, I shot this at F13 because I really was trying to get some of this detail up here in the steeples and the towers in focus. And it did a really, really good job. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with this. I gave the sky looked a little blue. It made it look a little weird. So I shifted the hue a little bit and made it a little more teal. Um, brought down the exposure a bit. And I added, as you can see, I added a lot of contrast to the rocks. Um, it just helps it pop. It gives it that 3D kind of pop if you really accentuate the shadows and the highlights in your textures. So, um, so yeah, this I'm super happy with this. Uh, here's another one. This is a different angle of that. Uh, this might not be the same statue, actually. I think there are two of them. This might be the other one on the other side. 
this is just great. I mean, I shot this at F8. I wanted to separate it a little bit. I didn't want the statue to kind of fully blend into the rocks and the castle and the background. So I wanted a little depth, but not too much. I like that you can still make out the details in the castle. So this is maybe one of my favorite shots of the day. It's really, really cool. Again, here, I'll show you the before and after, before, after. Uh, look at some of the details here on the statue's face. Very, very cool. The rocks. I'm extremely happy with this camera. So moving on. This image actually I'm super happy with. I know that this kind of goes against what I was saying about getting different angles. I'm sure there's like a million people that have this kind of angle of the castle, but I did try to get up higher on some steps. And um, you can see the statues that I was showing you earlier are way down here. So you can kind of see the kind of um, perspective that I would have had to get to get these things in the background that you saw in those earlier images, I would have had to have been standing way down here looking straight up to get that framing right. And um, so this one actually, I think took a fair amount of editing to get to look good, but here's the before and here's the after. This lens is just um, fantastic. I mean, look at all the details and all the bricks and the contrast you get on the rocks. Incredible. And this was shot at F13. I probably could have even gone to F16. As you can see, I'm still at ISO 100 at 1 200th of a second shutter speed. So I definitely had some room to make it, you know, even a little more depth of field, but I hadn't really had a good chance to test this lens thoroughly. So I didn't want to get to the point where we start getting some diffraction from closing down your aperture too much because that is a real thing. So F13 is kind of a safer spot. So I think I made the right choice for this one. I think this image is pretty awesome. Oh, and by the way, all of these shots in the daytime, I wasn't using any filters. This was just only the lens hood and that's it, no filters. Uh, this was uh, this was just a cool one, a cool perspective. I was actually on the escalator, like over on this side, and I kind of just hung my hung my arm out like this, and I just snapped the photo of the kids trying to. They thought they were cool and thought they could climb all the stairs, but they got super tired. <laughs> so this is that um, again, like really really good detail here, even at f8, and love the contrast. You can see how this would make a fantastic street photography lens. So light, super sharp, really good contrast. The colors are really nice. Okay, so here, now it's nighttime and I have thrown on the, uh, the ProMist filter from KNF and I showed you that in the original video. So moving on here. So nothing really special here, I just, it's kind of cool to see the contrast and the detail that you can get in some of, in this image. I mean, you can see all these cracks in Bowser's face and you can see the texture and I don't know, this probably isn't really concrete, but it looks like concrete. Um, very cool. You can see the blooming up here in these lights here from the KNF filter. And uh, moving on. I thought this was a really cool perspective. So this is another example of what I was talking about. You know, when you go to a park and there's thousands of people taking thousands of images a day, what kind of angles can you get to make your photo stand, stand out? And I think this is a pretty cool example. I mean, I haven't looked, there might be other people with the same exact image, but I doubt it. Um, I messed up a little bit. I really was hoping to get that peak of the ceiling directly in line with the spikes, but I missed that, but I think it still came out really cool. I mean, the the amount of detail in this 
with this lens is incredible. Even at f2.5, which is wide open for this lens, I am incredibly happy. And the contrast that you get from this, it makes it look so 3D. Such a cool picture. Um, I don't know how much editing I did on this one. This is before, and this is before, after. So, pretty good straight out of camera, but you know, we got a little more saturation, a little more contrast. I did some masking, but uh, really happy with this one. Uh, this one I had to do very minimal editing to. I just, I'm amazed at the colors that came out of this thing. Let me see. So before, after, before, after. Very, very, very happy with the way this one turned out. I thought this was just gonna be a throwaway picture, but when I opened it up and I saw the colors, I was like, man, that looks really cool. This actually turned out to be also one of my favorite photos of the night. So we left Super Mario World and the park was pretty much closed at that point. And I saw this dude just standing here and I'm like, man, when am I ever gonna be able to take a picture of this with nobody else standing there? And so I just, I set up snapped a few shots off and I'm super happy. I think that the the mist filter looks amazing up here by the Krusty Land sign. I think that looks super cool. Um, let me see what the before looked like. So this is before, after. So I really darkened up certain areas. I like to go for kind of like a, sometimes like a triangular type of composition so i try to darken up like the lower third of the image in the corners to try to help bring out the the guy standing there and also crusty and the crusty land sign i did shoot at f 2.5 so that's wide open for this lens but i still had to go to 1250 iso i'm really happy with this one this is probably one of my favorite ones of the day as well Moving on, uh, we went back to Harry Potter world or whatever it's called and my oldest son is just sitting here looking at the window at Honeydukes. And ah man, there's just something so cool about this image. It's just, um, I don't know, you're just capturing memories, you know, and he's looking in there and it, I don't know, there's something just so touching about this for me, the warm lights, the kind of the warm colors, the really dark feel. And even though I underexposed it on purpose, the lights shining on his face don't make it seem like a very like dark and somber photo. Um, as you can see, again, I opened it up to 2.5. I went to 1 30th of a second because it was really dark in here and my ISO still had to go to 2,500. Uh, let's see what the before looks like. So the before, it looked a little too poof, like he was standing in front of like a CVS or some kind of drugstore or something. So I don't know. I wanted to make it look a little more subdued. So added a lot of masking, brought down a lot of the highlights, and I think it looks like a much cooler image now. It was honestly a, such a fun experience using this. The aperture ring is perfect i used it all day and i loved it so anyway that is the uh the end of the universal shoot all right so here we are at the santa barbara museum of natural history i think that's what it's called uh the first image here is just a random tree there's a log with a lot of greenery around it and um this lens just amazes me the amount of detail here in the tree bark it's incredibly sharp and the colors are just amazing even the the separation here the foreground is very well blurred but i didn't want to blow it out completely because or i didn't want just a brown blob in the front of the image i wanted you to be able to tell what it was you can still tell it's a log so i shot at f8 this i'm extremely happy with this the, the it's so sharp such a sharp lens 
So again, during the day, I didn't have any filters on here. Just uh, straight through the lens. I thought this one was kind of cool. They had a little T-Rex head there. My kids are over there in the background, so I snapped this photo. Uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of what kind of um, background separation you can get at f2.5. Next, uh, they're just digging on this mulch hill here that uh, I guess it's, it's an activity at this place. The kids can go look for like worms and other kinds of bugs and animals. Yeah, I mean, 2.5 is awesome. You obviously don't get as much separation as you would with like an f1.4, but when you're trying to keep some of the image intact, I mean, the, the context of the image, like where they are, what they're standing on, what's in the background, I think 2.5 is, is great because you can still tell exactly what they're standing on. It's a big pile of mulch. You've got the, the leaves and the trees in the background. Makes for a really beautiful image. The colors are amazing. Contrast is great. Sharpness is on point. Another, another angle. Um, pretty impressive. Uh, this one is just a bunch of, I don't, I don't know what kind of leaves these are, but it was a whole field of them. And just, I don't know, the, the, the detail here is just awesome. This lens is so sharp. And um, again, 2.5, you get a lot, the bokeh with this lens is so nice. It doesn't look too busy. Here's the foreground bokeh right here. You can see a leaf right here that's really blown out because it was really close. Um, and the colors, details, amazing. Uh, is that the last one? So that's it. I just wanted to show you what kind of uh, results I have been getting with my last two outings with this lens and uh, this A7C body. I am extremely happy with this setup. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I think I showed you guys that this setup, my Leica Killer Build, is an amazing rig, especially for the money. A7C with the Sony 40 millimeter f2.5 lens is a winning setup. Um, I have to admit that before I wasn't sure about the 40 millimeter lens because I've been a 35 guy for so long, but the 40 I am in love with. I don't know what it is yet. I think the fact that we get a little more reach with it makes it a very intuitive to frame things up. Um, so I don't know. I think I may be a 40 millimeter convert at this point. I, I, I'll have to, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and see before I fully commit to saying that. But, um, thank you guys so much for all the love and support on the last video. Uh, even the people who are defending Leica, I love you guys because everyone has kept it pretty civil in the comment section. I thought it was going to get really heated, but it didn't, which I really appreciate because I think we're all just in love with cameras and taking pictures and, um, we can be civil about the conversations that we have. And I think that's important. So um, anyways, again, thank you guys so much. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you. So if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. It helps out the channel a lot and lets me know what you guys are into. Um, feel free to drop a comment down below. If there's anything that you want me to cover in more detail, please let me know. And uh, my name is Matt, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.